oh, you see so-and-so, they post it now. Oh, they want to be an influencer now. Yeah, I do. I want to pay my bills. I want to work smarter, not harder. Hey, hey, it's Shay, your Millennial Mom Next Door. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're joining for the first time. We are about to get into part two of how to become a content creator or an influencer with no followers and not a lot of money because when I started, the budget was slim to none. Now in part one, if you missed it, we went over the basic foundational principles of getting your feet into the door of content creation and influencing. And just for a refresher, I need you to know everyone watching this video right now is an influencer. If someone has ever asked you, where'd you get that shirt from? What did you use in your hair? Where did you go to get some type of service and you gave them a recommendation and they took that? Or even if they didn't take it, but they thanked you, they came back for more, people ask you questions all the time, you have influence because people wouldn't be asking you questions for referrals and recommendations if they didn't trust your judgment. There is something in you and something about you that makes people gravitate towards you to ask you questions for help. So whether you are in the beauty industry, you are in real estate, you're in fashion, it doesn't matter what you are trying to start your content creation journey in, you have influence, but the issue is you don't know how to monetize it, you don't know your own power, and it's probably a lot of imposter syndrome and self-sabotaging going on, so we're gonna get into that. But first, I do have some questions I wanna answer from a question box that I posted on my Instagram story a couple of weeks ago. Okay, question number one comes from Kaya76. Hey girl, and she asks, how to decide what kind of content to create? I think she meant, how did you decide or how can I decide what type of content to create? That's a really good question. My personal opinion is always rooted in the life of convenience, especially if you're going to be a lifestyle creator or doing something centered around your life and not a service. I'm gonna address both. So let's first talk about if you are in the lifestyle content creation world like I am. You need to create content that comes natural to you, stuff that you actually feel like you're confident in speaking about, and things that are not gonna disrupt the flow of what you're already doing. This is how you'll be able to maximize and make the most amount of content without burning out. Because let me tell you something, the burnout is real, especially if you still have your nine to five and creating content is a side hustle or a hobby right now. So I am blessed enough to be able to do content full-time as a career, but when I first started back in 2020, it was very much a hobby. I was a full-time counselor in the public school system. For those of you who don't already know, I worked in education and then I transferred over into tech. So trying to transition from one career to the next, also when the pandemic had first hit because that's when I was making this transition, it was a lot going on. So making content needed to come natural to me and it also needed to be an outlet because we were all stuck in the house. And a lot of you all also started making content when the pandemic first hit. And then it sucks to say, but a lot of people fell off because they realized it got really overwhelming. Some people ended up having to go back to work and weren't able to balance trying to make content at home while also going to the nine to five. So long story short, I suggest, again, because there's two different aspects here. There's people who are lifestyle creators like myself, and then I'm gonna address the people who wanna create content for some type of service or a business. If you are a lifestyle creator, you need to do things that come natural to you. So let me give you an example. When I started, I was making content about going thrifting and secondhand shopping. That was my passion. That was something that I was very well versed in. I love to do it, it came natural to me, it came easy to me, and most importantly, it was something that I was already doing all the time. So it was nothing for me to just turn my camera on and then the content began to flow from there. You don't need to be an expert in editing or necessarily filming and making content in the beginning. You just need to get started and have a passion about what you're talking about. And before you ask, no, you don't need a bunch of fancy equipment. You can literally just start from your phone, y'all. I swear, when I first started making content, I was using my iPhone, what, seven, eight? Obviously this was back in 2020, so the iPhones are more advanced now. Or even if you have a Droid, it doesn't matter what type of phone you have. Baby, if it has a camera, turn it on and use it. Get some natural lighting. Right now, I am in my husband's office. Um, my office is getting some construction done. So I don't have like my normal light set up. I didn't feel like bringing that downstairs. So I just opened up his blinds and kind of had the camera where the, you know, the sun is facing me. Well, it's kind of like slightly facing me. It's coming from the side. And although, yes, I was kind of concerned because I'm used to having my lights up and I'm also used to, if I'm gonna be using natural sunlight, it's coming like direct at a certain angle. And also right now, like it's almost, five o'clock, so now the sun is starting to set, so I was a little nervous, like, oh, now the video lighting is gonna go in and out, it's gonna start out bright and start dark. Listen, even me, someone who is a full-time content creator, overthinks, okay? It is normal, it is natural. Like right now, 
I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can tell how the clouds are moving and the sun is setting, like the lighting just changed. That is really bothering me, but guess what? The bottom line is, as long as you can see me, you can hear me, that's all that matters. Everything else going on in my head is irrelevant. And I want you to know that as well. When you are creating content about something that you're passionate about, something you want people to know, whether it's lifestyle content or for your brand, your business, we'll talk about that next. As long as the people can hear you clearly and the camera is somewhat clear, I mean, it doesn't have to be a Canon EOS M50 like I'm using right now or my Sony that I like to use. It can literally just be your phone, like I said, okay? Back to choosing the type of content you want to create. So like I said, if you're a lifestyle content creator, record videos about things that you are familiar with. For me, it was thrifting, and then I transitioned into making family content. I got engaged, I got married, we got pregnant, had a baby, so it all intertwined. I like to do my hair and makeup and do skincare and self-care, so I like to make content about those type of things because I do it often, it makes me happy, and it's something that doesn't feel like a burden. So that's on this side, okay? This is the lifestyle content creation side. Now for the other side, my people who are doing some type of service, business, maybe you're doing lashes, nails, hair, real estate, you're a therapist, you trying to walk dogs for a living, you wanna start a doggy daycare, it doesn't matter what it is. If you have a service-based business, then there's gonna be different aspects of your content creation that may differ a little bit from the lifestyle side. So as a service-based business, you need to be educating the people, okay? If you are selling something, if you are dropping a line of something that's a physical product, people want to know how that product is going to look on them. How is it gonna smell on them? Is it a perfume? Is it clothing? Is it bundles of hair? Like whatever it is that you're selling, you need to educate people on the product and make sure that they can picture themselves in it or using it. That's the angle of content creation that you wanna go with. And another layer to that type of content creation is answering questions through your content. So let's say you are a nail tech and you really wanna use Instagram and TikTok or YouTube Shorts to launch your brand or grow your brand, then you need to be educating people, not just on the type of nails that you do, but also the health of their nails. A lot of people have misconceptions about nails, so you can use your content to answer those type of questions. For example, some people think that acrylic damages your nails and that gel X is better. Other people think that press-ons are the better route. So you need to take a stance and decide, okay, well, how do I want to maybe dismantle some of these myths? Or maybe you want to start selling press-ons. Well, you're going to have to show people, how am I going to apply the press-ons? How am I going to make them last? What are the common misconceptions about these press-ons and how can I dismantle those myths and answer the questions through my content? For those of you who are selling a product or a service, you need to make sure that you are educated people through your content because people love to learn even if you feel like they don't trust me they do because TikTok proves that we all call TikTok and YouTube University right TikTok University YouTube University because we love fun facts and when it comes to buying something it doesn't matter if you're selling nails hair or candles people love to learn about the product I'll give you a good example there's a candle brand, I cannot think of the name right now, but she's a small black owned business and I started supporting her around the time of the pandemic and she ended up not selling candles anymore, unfortunately. But I remember her content was so bomb because she was explaining all things that I didn't even know about candles. I didn't know you're not supposed to blow the candle out. That can harm the wick and it, it doesn't prolong the life of your candle. I didn't know that you're supposed to trim the wick. I mean, these were just fun facts I was learning because she was using her content, not just to sell candles, but to educate people about her product. So if you, again, are a service-based content creator, or you're selling some type of product, make sure that you are informing people about it, make sure that you are reeling people in by offering them fun facts. And ultimately, that's gonna help to set your brand aside and like make it stand out from the millions of people selling the same thing. Because let me tell you, the biggest fear that I know a lot of people have when it comes to creating content is, well, everyone's doing it. Everybody is also selling makeup, honey. And guess what? I have about 20 different brands that create shades of red lipstick that I love. I don't just stick to the Fenty Velvet Liquid Icon red lipstick. I don't just stick to my favorite MAC red lipstick. I don't just stick to my favorite Juvia's Place from also red lipstick or my favorite Sephora red lipstick. I want them all, why? Because it depends on my mood, right? It depends on maybe my outfit, the tone of the red, or maybe it's just that I love Rihanna and I wanna support her. There's a million reasons why I want 10 different red lipsticks from 10 different companies, but the bottom line is, these companies are not saying, yo, we're not going into business making red lipstick no more because everybody in their mama's making red lipstick. No, they don't care. These companies are worried about themselves and that's what I want you to do. I want you to focus on whatever it is that you are selling or some type of service you're providing and know that there is something that's gonna make your brand stand out to your target audience, okay? 
okay? We all have our own target audience. We just need to make the content that's gonna attract them and we're gonna get into that in this video. Now, before we move on to the next question, I also wanna say this and don't take it personal. Nine times out of 10, if you're just starting out with your content creation journey, and this is not for people who are selling products and services. This is for people more in my field, which is like the lifestyle content field. People don't really care about you because they don't know you. And again, don't take it personal, but you need to figure out what type of content you're gonna make that will attract people that's going to usually help people or that's gonna entertain them. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be doing pranks and being a whole comedian because child, Lord knows I can't stand prank content. That's just not me. I'm not the target audience for pranks, but there is a genre for that. But when it comes to entertainment, or educating people through your content, finding things that are super relatable and that are resharable. Because let me tell you something, if you wanna grow your platform, you need to be making content that people are going to reshare to their story, they're gonna send it to their friend, their mama, their cousin, they're gonna get a good laugh, or they may reshare the post because it reminds them of something that happened. Like, Just think about all the times where you reshare something or you sent something to your best friend and you got like a little cackle out of it or you just felt it, like you felt it in your spirit, you saw a meme, think about all the things that make you share content and sit down and brainstorm. What are those reasons? Do you share content because it's funny, it's educational, it evokes emotion? And I want you to sit down tonight because this is your homework. Go through your inbox and look at all of the things that you sent your friends, okay? In like the last couple of days. Then I also want you to go back over your stories and look at the things that you reposted. And I want you to write down what was the reason for it? Did it make you laugh? Did it teach you something? Did it remind you of a time? Did like you feel it resonated with you and you had to repost it? These are the things that I want you to remember when you are creating your own content. When you sit down to create as a lifestyle creator, and really you can use this logic also if you're doing a business or selling some type of product or service, I want you to refer back to that list that you're going to create tonight for homework and figure out, okay, if these things resonated with me so much that made me want to repost or reshare or stop and double tap and like it, comment, save it, what are those reasons and how can I create content based on what I'm trying to sell or the lifestyle style that I want to show, how can I create content that aligns with this list? So let me give you an example because y'all know I come from education. I got to do a check for understanding to make sure that we're all on the same page. So one of my recent reels that went viral, I would say like maybe two months or so ago, it was me doing my daughter's hair. And that is a personal struggle that I know so many black mamas have because when it comes to our little girl's hair, usually it is more coarse or it's kinky, it's curly. And it's not like we can just comb right through it, right? We have to sit and disentangle it. Sometimes this process can take hours. And if you are a mama out there or you are a black woman yourself with natural hair, you already know the struggle, okay? So for me, when I sat down to make that real, it was one, something that I was already gonna do. I was already gonna wash her hair and I was already gonna style it, right? So that's number one. I was creating content based off something I was already planning to do, something that is already in my lifestyle that comes easy to me. Obviously, I'm gonna do my daughter's hair. That's number one. Number two, when I made the content, I knew that I should put a text overlay on the screen that was gonna be relatable because people would share it. And that's just a basic strategy when it comes to content creation. So I'm gonna put this video on the screen for you all to watch along while I explain this. So I started off with text overlay that said POV, which means point of view, mentally preparing to do my toddler's hair. Now, right off the bat, that is going to be relatable for a million reasons. But number one, the struggle of getting ready to do your toddler's hair, if you have a toddler that doesn't like getting their hair done, everyone's gonna resonate with that if it applies to you. And that is how I automatically knew I was going to attract my target audience for that particular piece of content because there is a community of moms out there who I knew was gonna resonate and feel that struggle. That was a very easy strategy right there. Number two, I chose a song that was gonna resonate with my audience. I'm an elder millennial. I was born December 1989, okay? So I come from the genre of good music. No shade to Gen Z, but y'all music really don't be hitting like that. <laughs> so anyway, I knew that Nuck If You Buck by Cry Mob was gonna be a nostalgic tune that was gonna take my audience back to a time, honey, whether you was in the club, you was in college, you was in high school, wherever you were when that song came out, you were gonna remember it and you was gonna bop to it, you was gonna sing the words, you was gonna do a little dance because that's just how my generation does. Like when we hear the tune, it takes us back to a place and I know that because I'm in tune with my audience. And I know that because I'm a millennial and I use my content to attract and help support other millennials, especially millennial moms. Another strategy I used when I was creating this reel, and mind you, I didn't create this thinking it was gonna go viral. I mean, it did numbers that I didn't 
didn't even expect, which are the best type of content. I really created it because I wanted to help other moms so they would know, girl, you are not alone in this struggle. We are in this together. That's number one. Number two, I wanted it to make something obviously relatable that can give a little laugh, you know, make light of a situation that a lot of us have a lot of stress and trauma from, even from our own childhood of getting our hair done. So I created the reel for a bunch of different reasons, but I strategically did things like in the beginning, you'll see I put on Miss Rachel. If you have a toddler or a baby, nine times out of 10, you already know Miss Rachel is the <laughs> highlight of your kid's life, okay? She's a famous YouTuber, she's a former teacher, and you know, the kids love her and I love all of her lessons and her story time and her songs. But anyway, so I put on Miss Rachel, I grabbed the little snacks, I set her up in the high chair. I didn't just instantly turn the camera on and start doing her hair. I set the tone of the video. You get me trying to say, like, I made it like it was a part of your life because I am a lifestyle creator. So that is a technique that you need to be thinking of when you sit down to make content. How can I make this video relatable? If I wanna show doing nails or I wanna show doing hair, doing makeup or whatever, am I just gonna jump into the tutorial? Yeah, you might, you know, there are some videos that don't require too much where you just want to get straight to the point but you need to have a variation of your content where some content is a little bit more drawn out where you're showing a full spectrum you're telling the story and then other pieces of content that you drop can get straight to the point you need to make sure that your content is diverse okay so these are the type of techniques that you can easily integrate into your content especially for those of you who want to get into lifestyle content creation you need to make sure your content is relatable that is one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you for choosing the type of content to create things that are relatable people are going to share remember I was talking about the list you're gonna make for homework earlier what's gonna evoke emotion take people back to a place remind them of something be nostalgic teach them something make them laugh make them emotional these are examples of valuable content that people will share and that is how your Instagram your TikTok, or your YouTube is gonna grow when people are sharing your content every single week it's going to continue to get pushed out by the algorithm it's gonna continue to end up on the for you page or the Explorer page depending on what platform you're using and the more people are sharing your content liking it engaging that's how new eyes are gonna get on your content and that's how you get new followers you're not gonna get new followers if no one is sharing your content it does not work like that Whoa, okay y'all know I'm long-winded the next question comes from Alexandria uh, hey girl she asks how do you get out of your own head overcome your fear of judgment and imposter syndrome this is an amazing question because everybody struggles with it even me even your top favorite creator, even celebrities, even the biggest platforms, I'm telling you, everyone shows up and does the best they can, but deep down inside, we are still low-key nervous, but that's a good thing, okay? Because if you weren't nervous, that means you wouldn't care, and you wanna care about the content that you're putting out. So there's two parts to this question. One is like getting out of your own head and overcoming fear of judgment, and the other side is imposter syndrome. Let's address fear of judgment first. I need y'all to Pray on this, meditate on this, get this in your spirit, write it down on a post-it on a mirror, plaster all over your walls, your refrigerator. You need to remember that can't nobody tell you nothing, okay? I swear I say this like every single day and I even say it out loud, can't nobody tell me nothing. And what I mean by that is you need to have a certain level of delusion about yourself where you already envision yourself as the content creator, the influencer, the multi-million, billion, trillion dollar brand that you are going to be. You need to envision yourself as that right now and forget what anybody got to say because baby, these people are not paying your bills and that's that on that. The people who got the most to say are the main ones that are wishing they had your confidence, your resilience, and really your strength to get on camera and do what you're trying to do, okay? Or do what you've been doing. Let's be very clear. There's so many people who try to judge and critique that couldn't walk a mile in your shoes there are people who are looking at you and saying little comments or maybe they're talking to their friends about oh you see so and so they post it now oh, they want to be an influencer now yeah I do I want to pay my bills I want to work smarter not harder actually yeah I do I want to show up on camera and get paid by brands to do what you and I are doing for free anyway like I don't see any issue with that so if you have a fear which is I don't want to minimize your fear let me just say this because your feelings are valid y'all know I used to be a counselor so I got to make sure I watch my tone and make sure you know I'm talking to you out of love but I'm also here to gather you and get you together these people whoever they are whether it's your friends your family well really it ain't your real friends because your real friends are gonna stand by you and support you but maybe it's your family or your frenemies or just people in general 
Child, they mean nothing. You know what means something? The bills you have to pay, your rent, your mortgage, your children, the food you need to put on your table, the electricity for the lights you need to keep on, the water bill, that's what really matters. So again, I cannot say this enough, you need to start telling yourself, can't nobody tell me nothing. Why? Because nobody is brave enough to do what you're doing, and if they were, they wouldn't be sitting at home talking trash, judging you from their keyboard. I'm sorry y'all, it just bothers me that so many people have this fear of what other people think of them when I know doggone well that them same people wish that they could be in your position. Even if you haven't taken off and become super successful with your brand yet, the fact that you were brave enough to start, the fact that you decided you're not gonna settle just for you know staying at your nine to five where you may not like it, maybe you're miserable with your job, maybe you wanna do both but you just wanna make more money. Whatever it is, you are not afraid to settle. The people over there that are talking about you or judging you, they're obviously settling. And hell, maybe they're not. I just feel like if you can stand over there and critique me, <laughs> babe, you got other things to worry about because you need to turn around, look in the mirror and figure out what you got going on. Why are you so miserable that you're worried about what I'm doing, trying to become a content creator or trying to pursue my passion and get paid to do what I love? That should be something that you're applauding. But you know what it is? They're just a hater. Their mama a hater, their grandmama a hater, their aunties are haters. They come from a long lineage of hate. So it's really not your fault. It's on them and their trash bloodline. So again, don't worry about the haters. You focus on creating content for your brand. And once they see that money is starting to roll in, because baby, they gonna see it. They gonna notice that you starting to dress a little different. You get that house, you get that car. They gonna notice the difference and they gonna wish they was cheering you on instead of hating on you. Now let's get into the other part of her question was overcoming imposter syndrome. And I talked a lot about this in part one. Make sure you go watch that. But basically I'm gonna reiterate what I already said. You all need to be delusional enough to already see yourself as the influencer, content creator, whoever it is that you know you can be. Okay, so let me break down to you why being delusional is so important. When you reach a level of delusion where you will show up on camera every single day, okay, not every single day, but as much as you can, let's say you can get to posting at least four to five times a week on whatever platform you wanna use. Let's say you're creating like blog style captions where you're really speaking to your audience and you only have 100 followers, cause that's what I was doing, child. When I started my brand, I had captions that were like paragraphs, I was writing a whole dissertation, really speaking to my audience in a personal matter, trying to draw them in when nobody was watching. It can take weeks, months, a year, whatever time it takes. If you can be consistent in that and showing up because you're delusional enough to believe that your brand is gonna blow up, one day when you get a post that goes viral or one day when you get a post that maybe a celebrity sees or someone with influence sees and they wanna buy your product or purchase your service or whatever it is that you're selling, even if you're not selling anything, if you're a lifestyle creator like me and one of your videos just goes viral, like I said, when that day comes, you want to be prepared. Let me explain. If you don't know how to be delusional enough to see yourself as the consistent money-making content creator you are now today, when it finally happens, where you get the exposure you've been wanting so bad and praying for, when you finally get the visibility and all the eyes on your page, if you don't have the habits set in place already, you are going to fail. If you don't already have a catalog of content waiting for people to go catch up on, you have wasted the opportunity to really take off. Child, I launched this page at like, I don't know what, the end of 2021? Didn't post nothing until the following summer 2022. Still haven't been really consistent with putting out these long form videos. That's a whole nother story. I need to start taking my own advice there. But one thing I decided was that I was gonna be delusional enough to see myself as this big YouTube star, okay? Even though I'm only putting out like one video a quarter. I know that's insane, but I'm delusional. So although I'm not producing long form content, I just started recycling all my old shorts. So anything I posted on TikTok, anything I posted on Instagram, I was just putting it on YouTube shorts. And then boom, one day out of nowhere, this video, which I'm gonna show on the screen, this video started to take off, y'all. At this point, I think it has like 1.5 million or 1.6 million views. It took off out of nowhere. Before that, my YouTube shorts were maybe getting like 50 views, 60 views, well nobody checking for my page and clearly nobody was checking for my YouTube because I wasn't posting consistent long form content. But because I kept going, because I stayed consistent, y'all, I literally went from I think a thousand subscribers 
to almost 30,000 in a month. I kid you not. And that is because, like I said, I had a video go viral. And the thing about delusion is, if I wasn't continuing to post my shorts, even when no one was watching, when all those 18,000 people that decided to subscribe to my channel, when they all came to my page for the first time, what if I only had two videos? What if I just had that video that went viral, you know, that one YouTube short that I just showed y'all? What if I only had that video and maybe like one or two other videos? They probably wouldn't have subscribed because there would be no reason to. But because I was prepared, because I was already delusional enough to see myself as this big time YouTuber, even though I was only reposting videos from my Instagram and TikTok over the shorts, people were able to see my content and start catching up on what they missed. I literally had so many comments of people saying, oh my God, where have you been all my life? I've never seen your page before. Oh my gosh, I love your content. Your daughter is so cute. Your marriage is so beautiful. I love your style. Can you teach me your makeup? routine can I see more of your skincare routine I mean people were coming out of the woodwork y'all and I attest that again to me being delusional and not worried about imposter syndrome I attest that to me not worrying about the haters I attest that to me understanding the power of influence because although I didn't have anybody checking for my YouTube I didn't have a lot of subscribers nobody had ever heard of my channel I was delusional enough to believe that one day one of these videos is gonna pop off and baby I need to be prepared one day some Something's gonna happen people are gonna flood into my channel and look at my page and I need to make sure that they can get a gist of what I'm about I need to make sure I have my lifestyle content in order I need my skincare routines my style content me doing my hair my nails all of the things that I want people to know about me and be inspired by me from I need to make sure that is showing up here consistently so although I am still struggling with long-form content because it's just not my forte it's not something that I'm used to creating like sitting down like in this format I don't know it's just something about it like I can talk for days clearly I'm long-winded but the process of like sitting down making sure that like my daughter isn't up you know making a bunch of noise in the background I have a quiet space to record making sure I have the time to do it then to edit I mean there's a lot of logistical reasons and I'll call them excuses because you know at the end of the day it's an excuse we make time for what we want there's a lot of logistical excuses as to why I haven't been producing long-form content but it doesn't matter I am still delusional I believe that my content on shorts is just as good and just as popping as the most popular YouTuber that has a million long form content videos. I don't care. I'm gonna show up and post my shorts. Yes, the same videos that you can go see on my TikTok, the same old raggedy videos that's been sitting on my Instagram from years ago, I don't care. I'm going to repost them and I am delusional enough to believe that people are going to watch them and want to learn more about me. And guess what y'all? That is exactly what happened. I now went from getting 20 and 50 views on my YouTube shorts to now thousands and one of them hit a million. I have another one that's about to hit a million. I was looking at this morning. That's amazing. Why? Because that puts money in my pocket. I got monetized so now I can start making money from YouTube. And let me know in the comments if you want a video on the monetization process because I'm hearing that the process has changed from how it was like back in the day. So if you want to know how it is because I literally just got monetized earlier this year Let me know and I can make a separate video on that So again y'all when it comes to imposter syndrome be delusional and do what you can if you feel like you don't have the level of editing skills to hop up on YouTube and make long-form content video or you don't have the time like me or you won't make the time it's just not on your priority list right now repost all your old videos from other platforms to YouTube short that's a great way to start out and grow your YouTube platform I am obviously not a YouTube expert but I am a semi expert on growing your Instagram and TikTok you can do the same thing there you may think that you can recycle your videos from Instagram over to TikTok baby you are completely wrong okay and again that's your imposter syndrome I'm talking because you have it in your mind that oh people don't want to see my content over there because they already see it on Instagram girl that's just the devil talking that's the enemy getting to your mind and your head trying to take over no you need to post your content on all platforms because these platforms have different audiences remember I think I said this in my last video but I'm gonna say it again every platform has its core ride or die audience there are people that will sit on X formerly known as Twitter and scroll all day long there are people who will sit on Instagram and scroll all day long there are people who don't really understand TikTok but they love YouTube YouTube shorts there are people who love watching long-form content on YouTube but they also dibble and dabble on TikTok every platform has its own audience so if you feel like you can't cross post your content and gain a new following you are sadly mistaken because I'm telling you the people who are watching your TikTok videos some of them may be the same but majority of them 
are not the same people that sit over on Instagram all day. Just like the people who will sit and watch YouTube videos for hours or let it play as white noise in the background, they probably don't sit on Twitter all day. Every platform has its own separate audience and baby, you need to be taking advantage. Even Pinterest, I forgot about Pinterest, oh my gosh. There's a whole dedicated platform to Pinterest. My brand manager was telling me how I should get into making a Pinterest account, well I have one, but I don't really actively post. But she noticed that there are companies doing brand deals for Pinterest now and I'm like, yo, well not now, it's been a thing, but it's becoming more and more prevalent. So that's more money, that's a, another bag we could be getting to, but I'm over here trying to get consistent on YouTube. I need to activate some more delusion and start posting on Pinterest too. But anyway, that answers the question of how to overcome the haters, which hmm, we're not even gonna acknowledge them, but more importantly, how to overcome your imposter syndrome and get out of your own head. Baby, you need to just show up and start getting prepared. Because I'm telling you right now, if you are struggling to be consistent and make content for just 50 followers or 12 subscribers, you don't want the problems that come with having an audience of 10,000, okay? You don't want the struggle, you don't want the stress of having an audience of 100,000 because those people are following you for a reason. They're going to want to see you. They're going to want you to show up like their favorite 90s cartoon, okay? So if you are sitting at home questioning yourself, doubting yourself, and you're letting it, and you're letting it take over, you are stopping your creative process and you are hindering yourself from getting new subscribers and getting new followers and bringing new eyes to your platform who need to hear from you. They need to to learn from you. They need to see the content that resonates most with them. They need to see the content that lifts their spirits. Y'all don't know how many DMs I have from people telling me that my self-care content and my motherhood and marriagehood content inspires them. It helps them to keep going after a heartbreak and hearing my story has inspired them because Lord knows my dating history was insane before I met my husband. I mean, it was a roller coaster of emotions. So my good girl tribe, shout out to y'all, the girls that's been rocking with me from day one they know my journey and most of them have stuck around through my ups and downs and through me going from secondhand shopping and thrifting to making relationship content to motherhood content to now getting into luxury and travel all of these things they have stuck around for the ride because they are invested in my story and I make content that provides value to them so that is what I want you all to remember the next time you feel some imposter syndrome going on absolutely not we cannot have that we need to be a little delusional and see ourselves as the content creator that we know we want to be and also remember that you have to get into the habit of showing up because one day there is going to be a piece of content from your page one of your pages that gets a lot of exposure and when people come to your page and they don't see anything or they don't see enough they're not going to want to stick around they're not going to want to follow you they're not going to be invested in your story because you haven't shown up enough yet you haven't produced what I call a library of content for them to do a deep dive into just think about the last time you came across a page of someone you never saw before what did you do you were scrolling through their page you probably went through their highlights if you were on Instagram maybe on YouTube you went through their playlist you appreciated the fact that they already had a plethora of content for you to get to know them or maybe they were teaching something they were selling something some type of product a service that you were interested in whatever made you follow them you need to think about that for your own brand think about the last time you follow somebody you subscribe to somebody's page what made you do it and then turn around and apply that to your own brand okay this is the last question it comes from ashley deluxe and it's really not a question but more of her venting and she says sis i am so concerned about falling off and analysis paralysis is keeping me down oh my gosh let's get into this if you don't know what she means by analysis paralysis that is basically when you overanalyze, overthink and you start doing way too much mentally to the point where that video that you were going to record or that script that you were going to write out you just started overthinking so much that you literally get stuck that is what analysis paralysis is like you will literally talk yourself well not talk but you will literally think yourself into some type of crazy rabbit hole where you're not getting anything done and there's so many common examples of this but the number one thing i see most often because it's something i be doing myself sometimes let's say you want to record a video whether it's giving advice or doing fashion styling nails real estate whatever it is that you're trying to make content about and let's say you want to go look at some examples of other people doing the same thing right so you get on your phone you start scrolling and you start seeing wow these content creators have these really nice cameras awesome lighting their backdrop is really professional wow her hair and makeup is slayed Mm, my hair not done, my makeup not done, mm, my lighting isn't good. Mm, I don't know, I feel like when I did this video showing my nails, my cuticles weren't as clean as they could have been. Ooh, I just noticed that 
mm, when I was doing my style content, mm, my shirt wasn't really ironed how it was supposed to do. You could see the wrinkles in the camera. Oh no, the lighting was off. Child, you start overanalyzing things and nitpicking, and really, truth be told, you're gonna start pointing out things that only you notice, and then you get stuck, okay? That's one example. Another common example is you feel like you need advice. Okay, you're over here scrolling on YouTube, looking for what are the top ways to become consistent with content creating? Or what are the top five strategies on how to launch my career as an influencer? And baby, next thing you know, you about 20 videos into a rabbit hole, you were supposed to be recording or at least writing out some content ideas. And next thing you know, you have analysis paralysis and you're sitting there at two in the morning. It was 8 p.m. when you started scrolling. And now you didn't got a snack, got in the bed, turned the camera off or exited out of the editing app from your phone. Now you're just scrolling on TikTok or YouTube looking for all this advice when you should have just turned your camera on and got to work. You should have just believed in yourself and known, you know what, it's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to show up. That's what you should have been doing. But instead you got analysis paralysis. And baby, we are rebuking that, okay? No more getting into a rabbit hole of overthinking and analyzing and picking apart yourself. That's not fair to you. First of all, you need to be more kind to yourself. You need to give yourself a little bit more grace, okay? A lot of you are beating yourselves up and thinking that your content isn't good enough and when you show up, people aren't gonna be watching. Child, that doesn't make any sense at all, okay? Everybody started from somewhere. Do y'all think that I just started making content and was making money from brands and able to charge these thousands of dollars and get these collaborations the first day? No, I had to start from somewhere. It is literally like a muscle you have to exercise. That's the metaphor I want you to use when you start thinking of things like editing and talking on camera and just content creation in general. It's like a sport, okay? You're not going to just get good at playing basketball just because you went to a couple of scrimmage games or you did some pick a ball at the park, you played with your uncle and your cousins and them. No, you're gonna have to join a team well, really, before you can even make the team, baby, you got to practice at home. You got to practice at the local basketball court, at the park, on your own, in your apartment complex, your front garage, wherever. You got to put in the time and work to practice. Then after that, you got to try out and make a team. And then after that, you have to listen to the coach and develop strategies and go to strength training and conditioning. It is a process. You know what bothers me? Because now I'm about to read y'all. All y'all analysis paralysis people, I'm about to read y'all for filth. I'm saying it out of love though, because I have a counselor's heart, but I'm here to gather y'all together. Why is it that we can spend years and years going to school? Y'all went from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. Some of y'all went and got a bachelor's degree or associate's degree degree, some of y'all got a master's degree, some of y'all are in getting your doctor degree right now or already have it or at least pursued it. Y'all went to class, y'all did all this homework, these papers. Hell, some of y'all did trainings for your job. You had to learn new technology at work. Your boss hit you up one day off the late and was like, hey, tomorrow morning I need you to come in early to train these folks because we got some new software coming in. Or maybe you're not in management yet. Maybe you just got a new job and you are trying to figure out the new system yourself. You're trying to figure out this software or whatever it is. A lot of y'all will spend so much time, spend years perfecting a craft and things that you are not passionate about. You will spend years using some type of system at work, a software, but then got the nerve to sit up here and complain about the fact that you don't know how to edit a reel. That doesn't make any sense. You don't know how to edit for TikTok. But sis, you go to work every day just typing away at your computer. You're using all these different screens. Some of y'all have multiple screens at work. Some of y'all work from home and got all this equipment. Or some of you do services. Oh, let's get into that. Some of y'all do nails, hair, makeup. You do all these techniques. Y'all are y'all are creatives. You're very artsy. Maybe you do music. Whatever it is that you do that you're passionate about, you have spent time and years perfecting this craft, right? And now you're struggling with very minuscule things like how to create the content to show people something that you're passionate about, but you didn't just get passionate and get good at it overnight. You took years to do it. Some of y'all are working nine to fives and you spent years helping someone else build their dream and now you give up after like a couple of weeks. <laughs> it makes absolutely no sense. That same dedication you had when you had to apply to grad school, when you had to write them essays to get into whatever program, when you were applying for whatever it is that you didn't bend in and checked off your list, all that zeal and passion that you had, I'm gonna need you to bring that to the forefront and have that same thing for your content. 
I'm gonna need you to bring that to the forefront and have that same ambition and drive and zeal and passion for learning how to create content and learning how to navigate spaces that you're unfamiliar with. Maybe you don't understand the algorithm. Well, baby, Google is free, okay? There are so many articles and videos all over the internet, TikTok, YouTube. There's so much free information out there, but yet y'all went to school and got all these and when I say y'all, I mean me too. A lot of us went in and got more education after high school, got into student loans and all this debt for things we didn't even wanna do or things that we complain about or things that we want to leave behind us and pursue something else. We put all that time and energy into those things but now we won't just sit down and watch a 20 minute tutorial on how to make our lighting better in our iPhone or how to make our videos more clear using some type of software or how to edit in CapCut, how to make transitions or whatever it is. That is free information and we're just sitting back and complaining. That doesn't make any sense and that is a part of analysis paralysis. Some of us get into such a deep dive rabbit hole of trying to fix the problem by doing research on the problem when instead we just need to be taking action. A lot of us will sit back and try to come up with excuses or complain and reasoning of why something's not working out when really we just didn't live up to our own potential. A lot of you all are just giving up after maybe a couple of weeks or a couple of months of making content that you feel like is not becoming successful but what is the metric of success? If it people saw your video and you feel like oh but it didn't get 5,000 views okay well child if you were selling your bundles out at the local flea market or wherever at the mall I don't know wherever you're selling your bundles and 50 people came up to buy or ask you questions would you not be excited y'all have to stop this irrational game of metrics okay because although we understand that yes there's an algorithm and yes numbers play a huge part in the success of being a content creator you also don't want to take for granted that 50 people showed up or 20 people showed up to like your post. No, it's not 20,000, but it can be if you practice an attitude of gratitude and you keep posting consistently and show up for the people who are there. You're worried about getting 5,000 followers when you don't even make consistent content enough for the 50 people who like your post. I really don't mean to fuss y'all out today, but it just frustrates me because I know there is so much potential that is getting masked behind things like analysis paralysis and fear of being judged, imposter syndrome. And all in all, these are just things that you need to put behind you and move forward. You truly don't know your own strength and your willpower until you're forced to do something that you really don't want to do, but you have to do. And that is what I think about when I think about content creation. A lot of y'all are struggling to stay consistent and edit and, you know, even record or, you know, come up with concepts. But when we were in school, child, we didn't care nothing about no geometry. I know I didn't. We didn't care nothing about no calculus or social studies or, you know, whatever these classes were that they made us take. We didn't care about it, but we knew we had to get that diploma. I mean, of course, some of y'all may have been passionate about certain subjects, but I guarantee you there was a subject in school that you hated, but you knew you had to pass the class to get that degree. You knew you had to make sure that you passed these certain milestones to get that diploma. You knew you had to do it or your mama was gonna put you on punishment or worse, put her hands on you. Okay, a lot of us have been there. So I feel like when it comes to analysis paralysis and content creation, because content is not putting food on your table right now, because social media is not necessarily paying all of your bills, you don't feel like you need it. But I need you, again, back to what I was saying earlier, be delusional enough to see yourself as the full-time content creator that you want to become. And you need to tell yourself, okay, I have to create these videos. I have to learn how to edit. I have to learn or how to outsource, make some extra money so I can pay people to edit for me. <laughs> That's another conversation for a different day because outsourcing is the wave. You need to put yourself in the mindset that I have to do this or I can't feed my family. I can't put food on my own table if you don't have you know, a spouse and kids yet. I'm not gonna be able to pay my rent or my mortgage next month unless I post five times a week. Like, You need to start telling yourself these crazy delusional things because one day it's gonna be true. And how do I know this? Because I am living that life right now. When I started making content in 2020, baby, them videos won't pay my bills. But guess what? Content is now paying my bills. I have brand deals, y'all. Child, I was just talking to my brand manager earlier and going through, you know, my list of things I need to wrap up for the end of Q4. And I was looking like, dang, I have a lot of videos I need to finish editing by Friday so I can make sure, you know, I have the weekend just to go over some things and turn them in on Monday. And I was looking at the calendar and thinking about payroll. Like, you know what? If I don't meet these deadlines, 
I'm not gonna be able to get paid before the holiday break. And honey, I might be a little short on some things and we cannot have that, okay? Gigi gotta eat. Jeremiah, yes, my husband has a job. At the end of the day, we depend on each other. We are a family, we are a unit. So content for me is no longer just for play play. It's not a game, okay? It's not a hobby. This is how I make my livelihood, how I'm able to pay for my lifestyle. So I have to show up, not only for my audience, but I have to show up for me. I have to do this for my family, for my lineage. So although you are not there yet, sis, I wasn't there in 2020. Shoot, I wasn't really there in 2021. I mean, I kind of went full time with my brand and then I ended up going back to work. That's another story time for a different day. And then I went full time again and now I'm never going back to work for someone else. You know, I am full time entrepreneur down, honey. But I said all that to say, it wasn't always like this for me and it won't always be like this for you. Remember, you need to see yourself as the content creator, influencer, brand owner, whatever it is that you fantasize about, that you daydream about, whoever she is or he is or them is, they is, you need to see yourself as that person right now and start showing up and acting like it, okay? That is one of the biggest things about consistency people don't realize. People always say, oh, stay consistent, stay consistent. Well, what does that look like? That means showing up at a pace that you can stick with. If your pace is only three videos a week, then I would rather you do three videos a week for the entire year than flip-flop around do three videos a week for this month and then next month I only post once and the next month I post 10 times in one week and then for the rest of that month I'm not posting at all like no get on a schedule that you can stick to that is the definition of consistency it doesn't necessarily mean you have to post every single day I'm not saying that but you need to get into a regimen into a flow that feels natural to you and of course it's not gonna be easy especially if you are still working full-time but get into a schedule that you feel like you can maintain and if you fall off because it's gonna happen life be life in if you fall off you can easily hop back into the routine and get to moving okay that is my personal definition of consistency I don't post every day like I used to but I have I have got myself into a nice little wave where sometimes I may fall off and need a couple of days where I'm not really on Instagram or TikTok like that. Clearly YouTube, you know, still be struggling with that, but I'm still showing up and posting my shorts. I'm still showing up and I'm engaging on my Instagram story. If I don't have any content that I wanna post like in between brand deals on my TikTok, my main feed or my Instagram, maybe I'm gonna go live and talk to my audience. Maybe I'm gonna post more on my story. I have found what works for me and my tribe, my good girl tribe, shout out to y'all. I found what keeps my audience engaged and you need to do the same and most importantly you do not need to fall victim to analysis paralysis because overthinking and overanalyzing is only going to slow your growth i cannot stress this enough the biggest thing that's keeping you from your dreams and your goals the biggest obstacle that is in your way is you okay y'all i've done enough preaching this ted talk is getting out of control i feel like i've been talking a little too long i'm starting to get a little cotton mouth hold on Whew, okay, so that was the last question I wanted to address. I plan to make this video more about using data and your insights to grow your page and attract more followers, attract a bigger audience, but I feel like I've talked enough so I'm gonna say this really briefly and then I want you to let me know if you want more on this topic and I'll make a separate video just about that because obviously the Q&A definitely took up a lot of time. So when it comes to data, a lot of people don't realize you have free insights that you can go through and look at on TikTok, on YouTube Studio, on Instagram. I'm gonna use Instagram as an example just because I already have it up right here. So this is data that you can strategically use to grow your audience. And most of the times when people are not well versed in looking at data, it's because either A, it kind of scares them a little bit because it's overwhelming it looks like oh what are all these numbers I don't know it's very intimidating to them or they don't know what's there so whether you fall into the category of it's intimidating or you just never knew it was there across everyone's Instagram I know that sometimes the dashboard can change depending on I don't know if you've updated your Instagram lately Instagram be doing the most but anyway so let me just preface by saying this is only gonna work if you have a creator account or a business account, okay? If you have a regular Instagram and it's not a professional Instagram, you can go ahead and change that now. It'll probably take around seven days for your data to update, but just go ahead and make that change now. You can make that change in your settings, and if you don't know where it is or how to find it, just Google it, child, because I don't want to stop and show that. So for those of you who already have a professional dashboard, I want you to go to your main feed, you're gonna press the button that says professional dashboard. From there, you're going to click content you shared, okay? And this is going to bring up the content you have shared for the last 30 days. You can change it if you want it 
change it to three months, six months, the whole year, last two years, etc. You can see here it says select the time period. I'm gonna change it to the last 90 days. I changed it to three months, okay? And then from there, as you can see, it just reordered my content based on the metric of the video that reached the most accounts, meaning how many accounts saw my content, okay? So I want you to use this as a tool on what type of content you should be making. This is a tool, like when you're doing your research, use your data and analytics as a tool to figure out what type of content you should be making to grow your platform. So if I were you and I was really trying to grow and get new eyes on my page to grow my audience, I would filter this and I would change it from accounts reach. I wouldn't do accounts engaged, but I would go down to shares, okay? I wanna know how many shares my videos have gotten in the last 90 days, okay? Because like I was telling you earlier in this video, when it comes to growing your platform, new eyes on your page means potential new followers. You cannot grow your page if only your followers are looking at your videos. Like it's never gonna happen. Like mathematically, that's impossible. You need for new people to come to your page that have never seen your content before. You need to draw them in, attract your target audience through your content and give people something to go and catch up on. Have your content already consistently there. Remember, we're talking about having that library of content. Have that library sitting there so when someone comes to your page for the first time, they're able to boom, see what you're about, see what you're offering, find value in your content, learn about you or the product you're selling or the service you're selling, and then decide to follow you based on the library of content that's been sitting there waiting for them to catch up on, okay? They're gonna do a deep dive on your page. So in order to figure out strategies how to make more content, like the content that's already been working and bringing new eyes to your page, you want to filter it to the most shared videos because the more content that you are creating that is being shared, that's going to up your chances of growing your following because again, that's new people that are seeing your page for the first time. If I'm sharing content, I'm going to share it to my story and there are people that are watching my story that don't follow you. So if I reshare one of your videos right now, there are over 180,000 people that may watch my story that never seen your post before. And if they like it, they're gonna nine times out of 10 go to your page and then boom. Next thing you know, they're in a deep dive, going through your library of content and they may follow you. So as you can see, I have 49.8 thousand shares on this particular video. I already know what it is. It's when I showed my new upgraded wedding ring while my husband and I were in Italy. And as you can see here, it has reached millions of accounts. It's been shared, it's been saved. It resonated with people, it inspired people. You know, heartful, hand heavy, that was a part of the caption. People really love this video. So that lets me know, okay, people love my marriage content. People love seeing this ring. People love maybe seeing the fact that we were in Italy celebrating our anniversary. I would write that down as a note to myself. I need to make some more videos about that. Next, both of those videos are the same. The one that got shared 12,000 times, I already know what that video is. That's also me with my husband. I did a video of a recap of our trip to Italy and I put a text overlay that said, when you realize you weren't asking for too much, you were just asking the wrong one, right? So I already knew that was gonna resonate with the girls, honey, because child, when it comes to dating, sometimes these men will have you thinking you asking for too much and you're not and we'll talk about that on a different day but anyway that video really resonated with people as you can see it was shared over 12,000 times it was saved over 12,000 times it has reached almost a million accounts so boom I already know right there I'm gonna make more relationship content to grow my platform now let's get into this video this video is when I was doing some luxury shopping in Italy and I was teaching people about how much money you can save by shopping overseas, getting the VAT refund. I was explaining the differences for when you don't pay taxes overseas and you get your refund if you do pay taxes in the store. And then I was talking also in the comments about like the difference between shopping at the airport. I was just giving a lot of information on this video. So this lets me know, okay, if 8,900 and 18 people shared this, I need to make some more content educating people about luxury shopping overseas. That is an indication that more eyes are gonna come to my page that have never seen my videos before. This is a good indication that I will be able to grow my platform. Let me also share this with you. As you can see, I said this earlier, I have over 180,000 followers, right? For this particular reel, only 81,000 of my followers even saw this. So there's still over 100,000 followers that I have that 
never saw this video. You know why this video got some engagement though? So much engagement? It's because over 600,000 non-followers saw it. Why? Because it was getting shared, reposted. People were sending it to their friend. Girl, look at this. When we go to Italy, we need to make sure we get the bad refund. We need to go shopping. We can save money. People were feeling educated enough on this or entertained by it or it evoked emotion. You know, one of those topics that I told y'all for your homework right now. People were inspired by this. Whatever the reason that they wanted to, they reposted it. They reshared it. And that is how this particular video, it reached over 600,000 people that didn't even follow me. So when I tell y'all to look at your data and use your reels insights, this is what I mean. This is free data just sitting here that the average person doesn't really go through. And if they do go through it, they just kind of check it out. Oh, okay, this performed well, this performed well. No, you need to use this as a strategy. This is how you're going to grow your profile. Let's look at another one. This video has over a thousand shares, but I believe this was, oh, I remember this video. This was me taking my boots out of storage for a fall and winter closet wardrobe transition. And I was basically showing these boot inserts. I'll put a video on the screen so you can see. But I was giving like a little hat for the girls who want their boots to stand up. So this video got over 1,200 saves. It was shared a thousand times. And let's scroll down. And again, out of over 180,000 followers that I have, only 59,000 of them saw this video. That's less than half. But as you can see, over 67,000 non-followers saw this video. So when it comes down to metrics and data, y'all, I need you to pay attention. Pay attention to your videos that are being shared. Pay attention to the number of accounts that your videos are reaching. And also remember this, the algorithm is gonna do what it does. Don't take it personal when you have certain videos that you feel like your followers aren't engaging with. Honey, nine times out of 10, they didn't even see it. And the proof is sitting right here. Let me go back up to the video that I showed y'all that went viral when I showed my updated wedding ring. So out of my 180,000 followers, only 73,000 followers even saw it. That is insane. And 3.4 million non-followers saw my video. So what do I look like getting upset that, oh, my followers aren't engaging with this. My followers didn't see this. Child, it's not their fault. It's the algorithm. Let me break something down to y'all because I think that some of you are confused on how social media works, okay? So if the average person on social media, let's take me for example, I follow almost a thousand people on Instagram, right? And I'm only on Instagram, maybe collectively throughout the day let's say a total of four hours like I wake up in the morning scroll for 35 minutes to 45 minutes and then throughout the day I'm on my phone 20 minutes here 20 minutes there and then I'm doing some research looking for topics or trends or whatever for a whole hour and then at night I'm scrolling for another two hours let's say collectively I'm only on Instagram for four hours but I follow a thousand people how is that even mathematically possible that I would see all of my followers content and that's if they're posting that day just think about that for a moment a lot of y'all are in y'all feelings because you're not understanding how the internet works. You're not understanding how social media works. It is not humanly possible for all of your followers to even see your content unless by chance you're the only person that they're following, which we all know that's not gonna happen. Again, I follow a thousand people. So let's just say that all of my followers were consistent with their posting. They posted every single day. Hell, let's say my followers posted two to three times a day. Even still, y'all, I am a wife, a mom, I run a business, I'm also a friend, I'm a sister, I am a daughter, I spend time with my family. My parents live down the street now, so sometimes I close social media and go hang out with them all day. My best friend lives down the street. Sometimes I shut my phone down and just have some girls talk with her, I pour up some wine. I'm not just always scrolling on my phone, but let's say that I was, right? Even if I had no life outside of social media, if all day long I just did this, literally from the time I woke up to the time I went to sleep, I still wouldn't be able to see all 1,000 of my followers post. So what makes you think that if you post here and there, once a week, a couple of times a week, or a couple of times a month, what makes you think that your audience is even gonna see your posts? A lot of y'all are taking it personal that you're not getting comments and engagement and likes when you're fighting against a whole algorithm and mathematical system that you don't even acknowledge because you don't understand. Well, that's why I'm here to help. I'm here to enlighten you. I need you to show up as much as you can every single day, if possible, if not, at least three to four times a week, five times, post as much as you can, 
get into your rhythm because this is how you are going to get new eyes on your page. The majority of my engagement does not come from my followers. Why? Because again, it's mathematically impossible for them to see my content and I definitely don't post every day. So I need you to get out of your head that, oh, my followers don't like my content or, oh, people not liking my post. Child, they probably didn't see it. Matter of fact, moving forward from this day on, I want you to assume that your followers are just not seeing your content. Like it is what it is. <laughs> like don't take it personal. That is just how it goes when it comes to social media. People are not scrolling all day. They have jobs and lives and children and things to do. And sometimes people just take social media breaks. So I want you to assume that your followers are not seeing your content. What are you going to do to attract new eyes to your page? What are you going to do to get your content shared so it gets to the Explore page on Instagram, it gets to the For You page on TikTok, it circulates on the YouTube Shorts algorithm. What are you going to do? What type of content are you going to make that evokes emotion, that educates, that brings people back to a nostalgic time, that teaches them something about themselves, that reminds them of something? Like, What type of content are you going to create that will get shared and then using your data, what are you going to do when it comes to researching whether it's new topics, repurposing your old content, using your analytics and insights to strategically grow your brand. That's what I want you to focus on. You already have your homework we talked about earlier but second part of your homework because again I'm a former educator y'all and clearly I'm still an educator right now in this moment. I will always be a counselor okay. I want you to also focus on what are you going to do? What are the changes you're going to make with your content starting now that are going to attract a new audience that is going to be shared? What is going to make the people that do follow you and do see your content by chance, what is going to make them reshare it to their page or send it to their friend or reach out to you in a DM or leave a comment? What changes are you going to make starting now? Okay, y'all, so I did my Q&A. I taught you a little bit about analytics, but again, let me know in the comments if you wanna learn more about how to really use your analytics and your insights to grow your following and also get more sales if you're selling a product or some type of service. I wanna know what type of content I need to be making to help you all because right now I'm just all over the place. As y'all can see, I be going on my rants and my TED Talk and I need to get a little bit more focused and zone in on specific topics. So please, please do me a favor, take two, three seconds to just leave me a comment let me know what resonated with you from this video what do you want to learn more about what did you hear that maybe you have some questions about or need more clarification on let me know as always i'm here to help thank you so much for watching okay and you can be anything you want in this world honey but don't be a hater okay until next time see you later Bye bye